This week on the UB Football Insider Show, we'll preview Friday's game against Bowling Green and the Bulls' chance to win the division and clinch a spot in the MAC championship game. We'll have our top 10 plays of the season. We'll sit down and talk defense with linebacker Khalil Hodge. We are ready to tackle a big addition of the UB Football Insider. up the middle, Kevin Marks firing his way, pounding his way for the touchdown. He'll fake the handoff, stand back in the pocket. He gets hit as he throws and he gets sacked. Tyree gonna throw the ball deep, looking for Anthony Johnson, it is caught! Another sack by the Bulls' red-hot defensive end and a return of the hard hitter in the secondary, all part of the defensive effort against Ohio. Here are this week's Karuba Collisions. He'll fake the handoff, stand back in the pocket. He gets hit as he throws, and he gets sacked. Taylor Riggins with his fifth sack of the season. First and 10 for Ohio. Option, handoff, Olette. This time the Bulls grab him and pull him backwards. Deshondrick Foxworth and Malcolm Kuntz stuff the middle for a one yard gain. First and 10 for the Bobcats. Malik Irons in it running back. Fake the option, throw the quick pass to the left side, and it immediately the receiver, Cameron Odom, is hit by Joey Banks for what's going to amount to about a two-yard gain. That's another nominee for our Karuba Collision of the game. Follow UB Football on Twitter and choose your favorite Karuba Collision of the Week. Well, Coach, here it is. It's the regular season finale, and it all comes down to this game. It is a must-win game for your team. A win at Bowling Green on Friday gives you the prize that you guys have been shooting for all year, and that's the Mac East Championship. Uh, is there something special about the kind of setup in a winner-take-all game like that? Well, it, it's important, and I guess when you when you play 11 games and you get down to the 20 12th one and it's it's for a chance to play a 13th one for a championship it's really important and but the thing is we have to go back to to remember what what got us to this point what we need to do to get ready for preparation for a chance to play our best game yet even right after the game against Ohio your guys were already talking about refocusing and being locked in on the significance of this game any concern whatsoever that 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 will be a challenge at all? No, I I think so. I mean, when you have a game like we like we played at Athens, which wasn't very good, and and you have to quickly flush it and, and move on to the next one. And and I I think our group understands what's at, at stake and what we need to get done, and have great confidence in them. It's a noon kickoff at Doit Perry Stadium in Bowling Green, Ohio, on Friday for this game. Interestingly enough, it's the third time in UB's FBS history that they will play to win the Mackey's title. All three. Three of them have come against Bowling Green, and the road team has won the previous two. I don't know whether that means anything to you or not. Well, let's hope it does. Let's hope it may, it plays out that way. It's it's kind of ironic that it that it is to you know against the same opponent. But again, uh, no matter who the opponent, where it's played, and what it is, we have to play and play well. All right, the Bowling Green Falcons have had a very difficult season. So difficult, in fact, that they relieve their head coach in mid-October of his duties. So uh, as we get into the town BMW keys to the game for the Bulls and Bowling Green. That's the first question to you, Coach, is you're facing a team now coached by their previous defensive coordinator, Carl Pellini, who you know from your Nebraska days. How much has changed once the head coaching change happens? I, I don't think they've changed uh, you know, a whole lot in what they want to be. I think maybe offensively there's, there's maybe some minor tweaks, even though he's a defensive-minded coach, maybe some things that he wanted to see. But uh, Carl's an outstanding head you know, football coach. Um, had a chance to work with him for a season. Have competed against him um, when he was at Minnesota State Mankato as well on the opposite sides. He's a, he's a fine defensive mind. I know their, their team is going to play hard on senior day. There's a lot of things there that are going to be that I think those – a lot of those players have been recruited by people on that staff, and I'm sure they're going to play hard for those guys and hoping that, that maybe uh, Carl or someone else on staff gets a job permanently. Well, despite the tough season for the Falcons, one of the 
positives they have is one of the outstanding quarterback wide receiver combinations in all of the Mac. Their quarterback Jarrett Dagey is amongst the Mac's leaders in passing yardage and touchdowns and wide receiver Scott Miller are on the same side amongst the leaders in receptions, receiving yards and scores himself. Tell us about those two players and how that combination has been successful for them. Well, you know, they've they've maintained their spread offense philosophy but have incorporated some two back things as well but again when you have a quarterback that has now played as many snaps as he has and and a, and a really a, a fine receiving core that they have you, you can tell they've been through a they've seen it all they've gone through a lot whether it be not just wins and losses whether it be coverages whether it be those those situations and they're very confident and they know each other very well and where they're going to be but it, but as a whole Paul what what hits me is I've always been impressed with their athleticism on the offensive side of the ball I think they have elusive players players that can make big plays and again we have to tackle well and that's something we didn't do last week so it's a big challenge against a group like this as we continue the town BMW keys to the game to get you ready for Friday's big showdown between the Bulls and the Falcons. Bowling Green's defense has struggled all year long. They are amongst the bottom of the entire country in stopping the run. I know that doesn't always mean anything in these matchups, but as you look at their defense, do you see some opportunities to do some things for your offense? Well, no matter where they rank, we have to establish a running game, in my estimation, in a game like this, this time of the year. You don't know what weather conditions will be, all those all those things. So the run game is going to have to be established by us. We have to be physical up front. We need our two running backs to – really all our running backs to get off uh, to a good start in a game like that because that, of course, helps our passing game and open things up from there. All right, a win for the Bulls on Friday against Bowling Green gets them the MAC East Division title and a spot in the MAC Championship game in Detroit against Northern Illinois. It is a big one. Coach, have fun. Good luck. Thank you very much, Paul. Coming up, we sit down with senior linebacker Khalil Hodge to get his thoughts on the Bulls' defensive success. And we'll give you the top 10 plays of the season. That's next on UB Football Insider. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. This segment is presented by Seth Q, changing lives every day. I'm now joined by Bulls senior linebacker Khalil Hodge. We're here in the Gasevich Club. We've spent so much time focused on the offense for various reasons and for legitimate reasons because the offense has been so amazing and dynamic. Do you feel like you guys have lived under the radar a little bit, not only here but maybe throughout the conference and, and in the, you know amongst the minds of football fans? I mean, a little bit, I guess. You know, offense always going to sell tickets regardless. You know, and defense, we're just here to do our job. And like I said from the start, though, we have – Great players on offense, but I think we also have a lot of great players on defense. What's the confidence level of this team as a whole right now? I think it's high. I think <laughs> it's high, and I think the excitement around here in the locker room, it's big, and we're just excited to go out and play every Saturday and Tuesdays and Thursdays and everything like that. Does so. that confidence show in dumping the ice bucket on Coach, <laughs> the little bowling pantomime yeah. that some of you guys did after the game? Yeah. Is, is that where that confidence kind of releases a little bit? I think it is. I really think it is. You know, it's exciting. You know, um, I don't know if anyone on the roster has really even been to a bowl game besides maybe a few of us. So to to get that thing done, and it's just an exciting time. You know, I think one of the interesting things that we've learned about your defense is – it's there are guys doing things defensively for you that maybe fans and even those of us in the media didn't necessarily figure on at the beginning of the year on a pre Washington a Taylor Riggins um, give everybody a little insight into how some of the backups quote unquote um, have become key players for you and how that transition is you've helped that transition yeah I think our depth as a whole on this team you know just not besides the defense as a team our depth is is great. And um, I think guys like Taylor Riggins kind of get shadowed because you have guys like Chuck Harris in front of him. But Taylor's Taylor's a great player. When he steps on the field, he can make plays. Same as a pre-Washington, you know, is another lockdown corner who we all knew throughout camp, throughout spring ball, that he can be an elite cornerback in this conference. And now that his opportunity is coming, you know, he's really starting to show that. What does that say about your leadership and and about just the makeup of this defense that that – the guys who maybe aren't playing very much early in the year or wonder whether they're going to be playing and then all of a sudden kind of get thrust in, there, there isn't a drop-off. That doesn't always happen yeah. in football, Clear. I know you've seen backups that aren't always up to the test Definitely. sometimes. Why is that happening here so much? Definitely. Um, I think we're just all – everyone wants to play. You know, we're just excited to play. When you get the opportunity to play on, you know, the number one defense in the MAC now, you, you want to make plays. You, you, don't, you want to make sure you show up. 
and that's what everyone's trying to do week in and week out. All right. Uh, as for your season so far, you continue to climb up the charts. Uh, you're up into the top five all time in tackles. I'm a little disappointed. You're only six in the country. <laughs> you need to step it up a little I bit. I got you. I I'm got just you. Kidding you. But but how much do you ever reflect a little bit on the way things are going for you personally? Um, I mean, I reflect a little bit, but my main goal is we want to win a MAC championship here. You know, that's our plan, and you know, I think statistically, and you know, some of those individual goals, I think they just come along with you know winning, and that that's really my plan. Um, that's really my plan is win. Just yeah. Win. Uh, all right. Aside from all the good stuff that's going on on the football field, uh, we always like to let everybody know a little bit about what's going on in your life. And, yeah. And I know it has been a bit of a tumultuous and difficult year for you. Definitely. And, uh, you know, I, I don't want to get into too much of that other than to let you say how have you been able to fight through some very difficult situations this year? Yeah. Um, you know, after after my little brother passed away, you know, I, I, I want to dedicate the season to him. And, you know, that's been the plan from start to finish. And, I'm just going to continue to play for them. You know, my parents have been to a ton of games this year, and my goal is just to put a smile on their face. You know, if I'm doing that for the two hours, three hours, it's a chance for them to kind of get their mind off things, and that's that's really my goal. I know we've seen your folks at a bunch of games, yeah. and I know we've seen some cool moments between you and your folks. <laughs> yeah. um, how important is that to you? How much, when you know they're there, when you can look over into those stands and, and make eye contact with your mom and dad, yeah. it, it, does that elevate you as a player? Definitely. I mean, it's huge. You know, those are my biggest supporters in the world. They've been there for me, you know, since the beginning. And um, just for them to be, to make it to so many games, being so far away, Way, it just means the world to me. Um, they they don't they're they're used to that flight now from Oakland <laughs> yeah. to uh, to Buffalo, right? Yeah, it's not an are. easy trip, but no, they're used no. to it, aren't they? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Um, you are, and James O'Hagan are the two designated regular weekly captains on this team, and um, maybe we need to get you wearing a little more eye black like <laughs> O'Hagan does. But but what's the relationship between you and Jimmy? It's close. Um, you know, Jimmy knows he has to hold down his side, and I'm gonna hold down mine. You know. Um, Jimmy, when we picked captains, you know, he was the first name I put down. You know, if I could put his name down four times, I would. You know, he's the, the ultimate captain, the ultimate leader, and someone that the young guys really can look up to. You either got to let your hair grow or you got to figure out a way to get to cut his. <laughs> yeah, he's he going to have to cut his. I don't think I'm going to grow mine out like that. <laughs> Every week it's been someone different wearing Solomon Jackson's number 41, and it seems like whoever puts that jersey on, we like to refer to it as Superman's cape. Yeah. They seem to elevate their play. Um, in your role as a captain, helping figure out who gets to do that, um, how important has that been for you and Jimmy and this whole team? I think it's been I think it's been really important. I think that's really one of the cooler storylines of the season, you know, just to how forty one kinda gets rotated around and I think each week people really wear it with pride and you know, they're trying to go out there and put on the best performance because they know they have that Superman cape on and trying to put on a show. Are you hoping to get a chance to do it some point in the season? Uh, definitely. I actually talked to Coach Leopold. Um my brother my little brother wore four, so I know you I'm that's gonna, what I say I yeah. know the four is very yeah, important definitely, to you. Definitely. So I'm probably gonna stay in four all year just in dedication to him, but you know, whoever gets 41, like you said, they're gonna they're gonna do what they do. All right, and just finally, Khalil, I know this is, sounds like a crazy question. How much fun is this right now for you? <laughs> it's it feels like it's the best time of my life, to be honest. Um, playing football, you know, college football, my last my last go round in college, you know, it's exciting, and um, we just want to keep this thing rolling. We just want to keep it rolling. All right, well, I know you're gonna do your best to make sure that happens. Bulls linebacker Khalil Hodge. Yes, sir. Coming up, it's the top 10 plays from this season. And we'll introduce you to Hannah Watson from UB Volleyball. She'll take us off the court and into the classroom. UB Football Insider continues in a moment. Welcome back to UB Football Insider. This segment is presented by Town BMW, the official auto partner of UB Athletics. On defense this season, the Bulls have been terrific at forcing turnovers and sacking the quarterback. The offense has been terrific, setting a team record for rushing touchdowns and showing a dynamic passing game all year long. It has been a fun season on both sides of the ball. It's time now for the top 10 plays of the season, presented by ECMC. The difference between health care and true care. Number 10. The Bulls lead by six from the left hash mark. Snap, spot, kick on the way, and good! Good for Adam Mitchison. And that is a new UB career record, and there's never been a bigger one than that. Number nine. Rutgers gonna go for it, down 35-13. Shotgun snap, Rochino in the pocket, pressured, sacked! Uh, another one bites the dust, Chuck Harris absolutely 
destroys the left tackle. He puts him on his backside and goes in and crushes the quarterback. Number eight. Second down, quick handoff. Patterson got a hole, and now he's in the open at the 50, at the 30, 20, 15, 10, 5, bullseye! Jarrett Patterson for a Buffalo touchdown. Patterson gets to the second level and shows him the taillights and goes the rest of the way. Number seven. 22 yard line, Raglan, shotgun, pump fake, hit as he throws, ball trickles out, picked up by the Bulls, James Patterson, and the Bulls have recovered the fumble after Gaddafi Wright knocked it out. And that one's for number four. Khalil Hodge gets sent off in the next play. The Bulls bring pressure, and it was Gaddafi Wright comes right in and pounds Raglan right in the middle of the back. Number six. Second and four, quick throw, wide receiver screen. Osborne hemmed in, trying to find the hole, does it the 50, 45, 40, down the sidelines, there he goes. KJ Osborne has gone for a 53-yard Buffalo touchdown. He's a magician on the sidelines. KJ tiptoed his way to a huge Buffalo score. Number five. First down handoff goes to Marks. Got a hole on the left side, 35, 40-yard line. I always got the sidelines at the 40, 30, 20, 10. Bullseye! It's a 70-yard Kevin Marks Buffalo touchdown. That's a house call from Kevin Marks. Big time run from Kevin Marks. Not just the vision, but also the speed. Once he got to the second level, there was absolutely no one that was going to catch him. And right when Central Michigan looked to get a little bit of momentum, Marks comes right up, steps up to the plate, and rips their heart out. Number four. It's three on the left now. Tyree in the pocket, looking, looking rushed, rolls to the right, fires downfield. It's caught. Osborne at the 30, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, bullseye. Jay Osborne with a 75-yard touchdown. Great job by Osborne on the scramble drill as Tyree rolls to his right and throws an absolute dime to Osborne on the run, who turns the corner, and no one is going to catch KJ in the open field. Number three. Third down and 10. New tile, the quarterback, gets the snap. In the pocket, looks, looks, pressured, hit, ball Bumble, pops out. Bumble. It's picked up by the Bulls on Wuka at the 25. UB's going to win this game. And with 15 seconds to go, UB's going to come out of Philadelphia with a victory. Number two. Shotgun snap to Tyree. Got time, got time, looking, looking, now pressured. Has to roll to the right, rolling, rolling. Fires the ball deep downfield. He wants Johnson caught at the five yard line, out of bounds at the three. What a play, what a throw by Tyree Jackson. Anthony Johnson crosses the field into double coverage. First and goal for the Bulls down at the two yard line. How is it possible that he can do that? Number one. 109 to go in the game. We're tied at 29. AJ goes in motion. Man to man. Shotgun snap. Tyree in the pocket. Fires to the middle. It's caught. AJ breaks the tackle at the 20. At the 15. At the 10. At the 5. Still going. Look at him go. The goal line. Bullseye. It's a Buffalo touchdown. Anthony Johnson when you need him the most. A 29 yard score to the All American Anthony Johnson. It's all will, all heart, all determination from 83 to get the Bulls on the board. Coming up, volleyball junior Hannah Watson gives us an in-depth look at what it takes to be a student athlete. That's next on UB Football Insider. This is UB Football Insider, presented by ECMC. The difference between healthcare and true care. All season long, the achievements on the court and on the field have been amazing to watch by all of the Bulls teams. But sometimes we forget that every athlete is also a student athlete, and they embrace that role as well, including volleyball's Hannah Watson. Hi, I'm Hannah Watson, number seven on the UB women's volleyball team. I'm a defensive specialist and I am majoring in exercise science. 
The reason that I even chose to go into exercise science and get more in involved in athletics is because the people who have been the biggest influence on my life have, e have either been a coach, a teacher, uh, someone of that figure. They all have had such a huge influence um, on me and my success and I want to be able to recreate that for other athletes. With Hannah being an exercise science major and being an athlete, I think it really helps her um, know what is expected, uh, especially in that population. Hey guys, so we made it back from morning practice, yep. and now it's time to study. Well, what's really cool is a lot of us uh, have another teammate that's in the same major, or at least in some of the same classes, so we're able to stay on top of each other and, you know, brainstorm, help each other out with understanding something that the other may not. All right, everyone, class just ended, <laughs> and now we're on our way to alumni to pack for the road. Time management is the biggest thing, so just planning ahead, having a planner, jotting down everything you need to know week by week, um, being able to just organize your life is the priority. No matter what sport the student athlete plays, it's really balancing those time management skills between what they need to do in the classroom, their travel schedule, what they need to do on the practice field, and competitively during games. What's up guys, we're on the road for a long time today. We're not supposed to get to Miami until around 10 p.m. So we have a long trip to dedicate some time to academics. Leadership, communication, and teamwork skills that they learn being a student athlete can really help them in any career, no matter what their major really is. And it's a lot of those skills that they learn by playing with the team, going through adversity, having that grit that really helps them out in their professional life after UB. Obviously sports has influenced me in a huge way and just being able to see the impact that coaches have had on me and on other players, um, I want to be able to have that impact on athletes as well. Push them to be better players, but more importantly, better people. So it's pretty simple for Friday. If the Bulls beat the Falcons, they win the MAC East Division title and secure a berth in the Mid-American Conference Championship game in Detroit. It's a noon kickoff from Bowling Green, Ohio. You can hear it on ESPN 1520. You can see it on ESPNU. Lots more football to come. Thanks for joining us on the UB Football Insider.